Hey, how's it going guys? Zedai here. So today I will be doing a review of Returnal. Now, I want to mention that this game is definitely can get under a lot of people's skin. Basically, it can get very, very frustrating, especially if you're more or less of a beginner towards the roguelike types or roguelite as well. This game is not exactly a well done roguelite uh, sort of title, but what it tries to be and what the game is, is very, very good game. Now, I, there's no possibility of this game receiving an average score. It's simply not possible. The game is far better than that. But yet also, this game is 100% not a masterpiece, nor that it is like a 9 or a 10 out of 10. It really is not. I don't know if there are reviewers out there that are giving the score such as high as that. It, 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 the game does not deserve that, at least not to me, at least not in my personal opinion. Now a lot of people may be still questioning me and asking me, because in my previous video, well I should say the impressions video of Returnal, I said that the game is not worth the full price tag. A lot of people may even say all the games are not worth the full price tag, especially with the increased prices, and yet we are talking about a PlayStation exclusive as well towards the PlayStation 5, a lot of people don't have the PlayStation 5. And yet the price increase is not exactly comfort to a lot of people's ears, and that's, it's understandable completely. But will it even be warranted towards a $60 price tag? Personally, I think this game is nowhere up that range that it should have been. This game is more of a $40 price tag, that's what I believe. But because of the implementations of the PlayStation 5 this game has, that's perhaps why they have included it as such a high pr price tag. And in fact, Everything that this game has to offer, it has the quality of a full title games that a lot of people would be expecting from the PlayStation exclusives titles. Personally for me, even if that is the case, and mind you, that is, really is the case, I still don't think it's warranted to be receiving such a high price tag. That's my opinion, I don't think this game is worth the full price tag, nor that it is was worth the 60 or nor the 70 especially. Personally, I had to purchase this game for 80 euros because I live in Spain and uh, yeah, we have a currency of euros. So basic, it's even more expensive. It's just 100% not worth it. <laughs> okay, now let's get into some of the others that I want to touch on, like the good part. Because mind you, this game is a very good game. It really is. Perhaps it's not a good roguelite type of game. A lot of people like to call it roguelite. Um, rogue roguelite or roguelike in general is not that good of an implementation in this game. At least not. it has been not thought out throughout. Now I'm going to have a whole lot bigger video coming as well. It's going to be regarding the save progress and the save system. Basically how it works and why it's actually quite flawed is even underdeveloped. Now, again, I'm sure a lot of people will be arguing and saying, this is a roguelite, what were you expecting, blah, blah, blah. Whatever, it's not to say the same thing, because let's actually, let's get this out of the way. I had a lot of instances, well, to be honest, only twice, that my game simply crashed. I actually was during the second boss fight, um, you know, already was on the second tier, of his health progress and you know was about to kill him more or less I'm gonna go in the third tier anyway anyway but basically I received a crash and so at that point I was already grinding up and getting my gears and my stats and my progress towards my character so I you know I could take care of this boss and uh, I thought that I would have been just fine but look how that turned out to be because I lost everything all because of this stupid crash now because of this crash it really disincentivized me of actually continuing playing the game I dropped it uh, for a night, then you know, I decided to come back again uh, the next day because you know it, it is a PlayStation, PlayStation exclusive. Normally, if this game would have not been made by any other company or developers or whatnot, I would have already you know just stopped playing by now. But because of the you know the mark polish, the amount of work has been done towards this, and also because I do genuinely like House Marks as the, the developers because I did enjoy sort of enjoy. It's not, I'm not gonna. Uh, pretend as if I have completely finished and got like a platinum trophy or something on the Resogun. No, I, was, I did not. This game is something I like, right? Because I like third person shooters. I like the way the Sony has gone for with their exclusives. And yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will be saying, oh, that's all really they got. Okay, whatever. If that's the case and that's what you believe, that's okay, that's, that's up to you. But I love the way that's all they got because that was things, those things is the thing that I really like. God of War, The Last of Us, Uncharted, and so on, there's more. Ghost of Tsushima, you know, the infamous as an example, 
Like they are all similar aspects because they're third person sort of the shooter or maybe they're differences in schemes, right? Because like obviously not all of those games are shooters, but still they are third person perspective uh, gameplays and I like third person far more. And anyway, my point is just that with the crashing system that this game has and also because the glitches, the bugs, yes, I have encountered those as well. I've encountered with the doors just simply not unlocking even after the patch came out. It was still broken for me. A lot of reports have been saying that even after the patch is still been broken. I'm not too sure if that's true because I, I, it was the same thing for me anyway, right? It was even before or after the patch, it was still broken the game and I could not leave that damn room. So I was stuck there and the only option I had really, it was simply, well, restart the game. And that sucks because obviously if, that, if, that's, if that's what you're going to be doing, you're going to have to start from the very beginning. Uh, okay, now there's a few other aspects I definitely needed to touch on as an example. When, if I should say, the way you can save this game is not necessarily that very reliable, okay? Because... A lot of people and the developers themselves may not be the developers themselves but a lot of people say for example put your playstation 5 into the rest mode and just let it go come back after a night continue playing it that's not exactly a good choice let me tell you one thing's for sure is because of the putting playstation 5 to rest mode that's already a red flag that really is if you guys don't know, there's been many reports, and thankfully I was not one of them. The console bricked because of the re rest mode, and there were some issues. The console was crashing because of the rest mode. So how is this exactly a viable choice? It really is not. So I'm not going to even bother putting ever my console to the rest mode. I don't even care even if it has gone through many patches and software updates. I don't care. That's just not an option. It's not personal for me. I'd rather restart the damn game all over again than actually get my console bricked. <laughs> You see, there's always these stupid moments that, you know, always will mess up your gaming session. And it's just simply not a good option for you to be having these games, such as the roguelite, roguelike, wherever, not having any of the so uh, save points. Now, okay, how about this? I already have a solution, and yet the developers couldn't even think of this. But again, I'm not one of the guys that I'm going to be saying this is exactly how you do it. I am just bringing in a solution that perhaps could be a possibility for the developers to implement. Again, if it's possible to do it or not, that's really up to them and if they want to do it on top of that. So one of the things, as an example, still have save points, but don't let us use it. That's it. Easy. If you want to quit the game completely, sure, quit the game. You go to sleep, uh, go to sleep, need to go to work, go to work, you turn off your console completely, come back into the game, you were in the very last save point, save session I should say. But if you die, you start from the beginning. Here we go. Roguelike, roguelite, whatever you like to call it, that's it. You have it here. This is your genre. At least it damn saves the game if you get a crash on your game and uh, you have to hard reboot the game. And so obviously, well, you're not, well, you're going to lose everything? No. In this case, because the save progress, save system, finally it fixed. It fixed. You see what I mean? This will be a far better choice, in my opinion. I don't know if it will be possible to do it as well, though. Uh, again, I'm not one of the guys to tell you exactly how to do it because obviously I'm not a game developer, but I can bring in some of the solutions and maybe even some answers. You see, because of this solely alone, because of the roguelike genre, because the choice that the developers went with, this is already bringing down the marks. Because even if the game is going to be completely fixed and it's not going to have these hard crashes, you see, this alone already brings down the marks for the game. This is not exactly a good choice. Because of the roguelike and whatever you like to call it, a genre, a whole thing is just going to be excluded because saying like, oh, well, get good. What the fuck? How are you gonna get good for the game not to crash? I finished the damn game, dude. I know how everything ends. And so I'm not gonna uh, just sit there and just gonna take all the, you know, bashing and, and people will be telling me, for example, right? Like, get good, you don't know how to play this game. Jesus Christ. If there are people like that, they are the retard ones. They're sh they sure are then. <laughs> Talking about the save progress, this is actually the main reason of the main negative point I definitely don't like about this. I'm gonna have a full live video about this too, separately. Let's actually get into some good points. God damn, I've been talking about this system for so long, I totally didn't really get into a review. But that's good. More to talk about, it's always nice to have a lengthier video. At least personally for me. Okay, I love the dual sense support for this game. It's simply fantastic. But it's not as, um, like, you know, as good as the Astros, uh, the game that actually was a free game with the PlayStation 5, the game that's actually is a free game with the PlayStation 5 that comes and 
It really is phenomenal. It works well. I really, really like it. I love the rumble controls, the rumble feel, I should say, actually, the vibration, the uh, the trigger uh, feedback as well. I really like everything in here. It kind of actually makes it a little bit more, kind of brings you into the game far more. I have been using a 3D headphones uh, that I got with my PlayStation 5, and they do sound fantastic. 3D audio, the Tempest audio that has this, like a separate chip with the play, uh, that comes inside the PlayStation 5. I think it does wonders and it does work very, very well. I love the way there's seamless loading times. There's just simply none existent, more or less, right? You can clearly spot it a few seconds like, okay, this part needs to be loaded really quick. But it's not like you're saying, oh, come on, bring, come on, let's go, let's go, come on. And like, because every death that you encounter or you go through, is always like very frustrating time whenever you're going to have to go through this stupid loading, right? But because it is a PlayStation exclusive and the SSD has been throughout, uh, used throughout, right? This is actually a very good feature and I really, really appreciate it. Okay, now I want to touch this thing. I do like the storytelling. It's very mystique and it's very uh, kind of like a low amount of touch of the story that you could have actually would have been expecting. I'm talking about because of the PlayStation exclusive is not exactly known that gameplay will be coming first than the story. It will, it's usually the other way around. Usually. Not always though, of course. But in this case, it's pure gameplay. And I don't mind that. I like it as well. Now, if I had an option to go with the story or the or gameplay, uh, I like both, right? I'm not gonna sit here and deny and say like, oh my god, I didn't like the story, so it's gonna get negative marks. No, of course not. I'm gonna say I liked it. I'm gonna leave it at that. That's it. The gameplay really solidifies everything for this game. Uh, okay, now, I definitely want to mention this one thing. This game has sort of a random gener generated sort of the areas, okay? Now, okay, it's not truly random generated. The developers have already crafted every area, places and rooms that you could be encountering the enemies. Sometimes you don't, sometimes there are secret spots and some of the stuff that you could have been going through like as a puzzle uh, areas, okay? In this case, they are not exactly randomly generated. The only randomly generated is this like say there's a first part of the area that could have been the last part right that's it they just get changed around these areas that's really it and so getting there is a different it's always different route it's always different things that you would have expected as well and they never really truly are the same but yeah the area themselves they are always the same so it's not exactly truly randomly generated, but I can definitely see uh, why people perhaps dislike this and why is this even a feature. Maybe it would have been better not to have this at all so we could memorize the paths. But, you know, I think this actually makes it interesting more, the game, right? If they have kind of a randomized areas, because you never know what to expect next. And so this is what makes it at least more appealing for me, right? I don't want to know what happens next, even if I die. Yes, I can see why people could be getting frustrated because of that too. Uh, though. Okay, now the gameplay aspect of the game itself is phenomenal. It feels great, uh, works well. There's no animation uh, issues and as that because you can cancel everything, like in an animation canceling. I do like the act of reloading as well. It's like a taking implementation from the Battlefront 2. Uh, I really do like that actually. Now, the difficulty. Let's talk about the difficulty. There is a certain difficulty spike that happens on a Biomes 3, third one anyway. But, you know, oh, and maybe in Biome 1 as well. Because, like, at first, when you try to play the game, you don't really know what to do. You kind of will be a lot more passive than you usually would be. Because at the end of the day, at the end, like, I've just been going blazing right through the enemies using my melee more often, on uh, the bigger foes and stuff like that. I've, I've noticed that myself that I'm just actually going to go and much less cautious, in fact, in this case. Uh, maybe it's because I'm more confident in myself and the abilities and stuff like, you know, memory of the triggers and the buttons and stuff like that, the layout. But again, that's just me. Now, a lot of people will be playing the game very passively, taking their time, you know, making sure they don't bring down their health. Um, of course, in the first volume, it's very easy to get away from this, basically come back to the ship, get your health back up and stuff like that, continue to the next area, make sure you just don't die, and make sure you don't pick up any of the consumables of green, like basically the health bars, because in this case, you can actually upgrade your health instead. Now, again, look, this is doing this method is the best way, but it also takes the longest. So after when you encounter to go to the bind two, three, four, whatever, yeah, there's always an opportunity for you dying, then you waste a lot of time. Here's the issue. If you waste a lot of time, this game 
has no respect of your time. This game is, is very bad about that. Very bad about that. And a lot of people may hate that. If that's the case and if you don't like something about that, do not get this game. This game will aggravate you and it will 100% waste your damn time. And so if that's the case, if you're worried that you'll die, you don't want to, uh, you know, learn maybe, because perhaps you have your own personal life that you need to take care of. You can't just sit there for three hours and hope for the best. You don't die at the process. But then if you do die, you wasted three hours of your damn life because this is exactly how it's going to go. This is a waste of your life. It really is. The game has no save points. So this means you have to replay again and again and again. That's actually negative. That's actually negative. And but a roguelike. So that's a genre for a lot of people. Perhaps they like it, they don't. That's up to them. Personally, for me, I think it is a waste of life. <laughs> waste of time, not a waste of life. But you know what I mean. Again, that's up to experience a lot of uh, up to a lot of people too. Okay, now I don't like the way there's only a few persistent upgrades, right? There's not a lot of variations. Like for example, if I know this upgrade is there, I'm gonna take it, and I know if this is actually a good upgrade. If there's a bad upgrade, I'll never take it. And so you end up only going one particular upgrades. And you know, for example, I believe it was artifact. I'm leaving my memory for. I apologize, but basically there's a certain amount of artifacts or some certain amount of items that you can pick up But then this is best for you to actually not to pick these things up Instead pay attention what you want and make sure you always pick up the same shit that you always do Because they are usually the best or are they are the overpowered ones, right? There's a carbine. I believe is one of the best weapons there's just nothing else really matters except the carbine weapon you know as an example i know this is not a weapon that a lot of people prefer i prefer carbine that's just my opinion of course as long as it has a power and uh you know the strength of the power that actually kills uh, foes quicker that's it that's all that matters nothing else really matters you see this is a problem there's not there's not much variety in this there's not persistency of the upgrades okay now this is important as well this isn't a personal opinion of mine it depends though runs can feel needlessly long so basically continuing from a run to like say biome 3 because it's considered to be the longest biome if i want to complete it completely and i want to get to the boss as an example of course that depends how you want to go get to the boss if you want to continue through the biomes and actually explore find everything get the consumables upgrade yourself get stronger right and so that really depends how you want to go about it this means any time when you encounter a new bond, right, you encounter different areas, you, there's always a chance or an opportunity, opportunity to find something great, something shit, or you end up dying. It's very, very possible. Even if you are like overpowered at the moment, but there's always enemies that are, can deal a lot of damage on you, and there's always waves of enemies that can actually keep coming and just simply outmatch you or outnumber you by a whole lot that you just simply cannot get away. And it sucks, it obviously does suck, and even though this is, if that's the case, it usually happens in biome 3, um, sometimes in biome 4 as well, and like those flying creatures as well, that can be extremely irritating too, a lot of people say they need to be nerfed. I actually kind of agree, they need to be nerfed. <laughs> And the last thing I personally think is a little bit of an issue, and but it's at least it's an, it has an addictive loop to it. So I don't know if this is truly is a negative. The combat. Now the combat can feel very repetitive. You pretty much what you do is go, like I said, go to area to area. So you encounter the enemies, kill them. That's it. That's all you do every single time, every, every single moment. Just go through different areas. You kill, 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 kill. There's not much else to do. Really, that's that's just it that it can feel very repetitive for a lot of people but again it is an addictive loop that it has because it does get you a satisfying feel whenever you take care of the enemies you kill them you get the gains of experiences and you level yourself up but at the end of the day when you realize that oh my god if i die i lose all of this and i lose my time on this game so you know it can really demotivate you or actually continue playing the game not necessarily because Oh, I'm gonna stop right there even if you didn't die. If I do die, I'm never playing this damn game again. It's kind of that feeling you can get. So it's not exactly comfort to anybody. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, that's just my review of the game. Now, I want to mention first thing for, first things first. I was thinking, it's, well, I should say, I was considering actually making like a proper, like heavy edited style review. But then at the end of the day, I decided against it because the game did not peak my enjoyment to the maximum as I perhaps would have preferred. But instead, I actually will be putting more effort and time uh, into editing my video about its stupid progress of the safe system and how it is quite broken and it's not even well thought out, it's underdeveloped. 
Again, I'm sure a lot of people will be saying, oh, it's a roguelike, what were you expecting? Shut up. <laughs> Crushing your damn game and yet like, oh my god, I have to start from the beginning, as if that really is an answer. Well, I feel like I've actually triggered a few people. Don't really care. That's just my opinion. Of course, guys, you have to consider this as well. Tell me down in the comments what did you think about this game, the Returnal. Be honest. Don't say oh, you're going to love the game and blah, blah, blah. You have to hate some of the moments in this game. It just does not make sense why you would completely love the whole game from the beginning to an end. Even if you die, I want to replay it again again and again 30 times over and you die again. No, that just does not work like that. You would get frustrated. You will find some faults in the game for sure. Okay, uh, I think I'm done uh, rambling. Man, it's been a long one. Wow, it's been a very long video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Like and subscribe. See you guys all. And as always, have a good one.